YouTube famous. I don't know. Probably never. What I do know, I'm still Angie. This is still 4F Beauty. You are still more than welcome. And I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to do this in black and white. So, uh, surprise! <laughs> Um, basically today I am doing a film that I am dedicating to one of my friends, one of my lovely friends, Will Venus. He's had a bit of a tough time recently and he asked me to do a look based on part of my set behind me. Uh, and it gave me a chance to try out the Ofra Pro palette that I showed you in one of my last haul videos. So, if you want to find out If this is in black and white, that is exactly what I've done in terms of makeup on my face. Or if it is in colour, how I achieve this look. You're in the right place. Sam with the sloth straw is here to tell you to grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, and get comfy. So it comes. Hey my lovely ones, okay I am back from the intro that obviously I haven't filmed yet. Um, again, first of all apologies for the fan, it's blisteringly hot in my kitchen, which is where I film. Um, so if I don't have that on, I'm going to be no use to man or beast. Uh, secondly, I'm really sorry, it's been a gap again with me filming. But uh, the cellulite on my legs has got to the stage where it, it's constantly painful during the day, but it's at a level that your brain eventually gets used to it and can ignore it a little bit more. But it's going through a phase at the moment at night where the minute I lay down and put my legs up, it's, it's like I'm being stabbed in random places all over my leg. Um, I hope that means it's the skin healing itself, but it is stopping me from sleeping. Um, so then, uh, you know, I get up in the morning on maybe an hour's sleep if I'm lucky. I take my painkillers. By the time my painkillers have kicked in, it's then blisteringly hot in my kitchen. It's about 10 o'clock. Um, even though I'm up at like half four with the hubby. So, it's Sunday, it's just gone half four in the afternoon, so I'm hoping, with the heat of the day slowly going, that I might be able to get a little bit of filming done today. Hubby is about to come in through the back door. Um, it's alright darling, come in. I've warned them to expect you. Um, what I'm going to do today... Uh, has, it, it's a joint viewer request and it's June. June of course being Pride Month. Uh, and I have got my Pride umbrellas. And my lovely wee Scottish Viking friend Will had asked me to do a look based on my brollies. Um, and he's he's a little bit subdued at the moment, bless his heart. Um, his cat that he'd had for getting on for 17 years sadly passed on and then the other day he was subjected to uh, homophobic abuse in the street with his husband. Um, so I thought, do you know what? I don't care how much pain I'm in, I don't care how hot I am, I'm going to film this look for Will to cheer him up. Uh, and it also gives me, gives me a chance to try one of the newer palettes that I bought that still haven't dipped into yet. This is the Ofra Pro palette, which as you can see has got a nice lot of rainbow colours. doesn't have an orange, slightly annoying. 
So I'm going to grab my Revolution Birds of Paradise palette because this does have a really nice neon orange and also a slightly deeper orange there so I can see how it looks when I start blending as to which of those oranges to use. Um, I genuinely don't... Oh, the names for the colours are on the back, that's really helpful. The one that I think is more red, they're calling Fire Orange. Actually, they could be right, that is an orange. In which case, I need to find a red. And there isn't a red in there. So I will grab my Nikki Tutorials palette and use the Mikai shade, which obviously is named for her brother. Actually, I might use that Redemption shade as well, because I think I prefer that to the orange in the Pro palette. Yeah. So, that's the plan. Uh, this does still remain a teaching channel and as such I'll be zoomed in to just my eyes on screen. It does mean when I look down to clean a brush or add more pigment you get a lovely shot of my widow's peak but to me that's a fair trade off for being able to see what the hell's going on with your eyes, especially if you're watching me on a phone and your eyesight's not what it could be. Uh, by virtue of it being a teaching channel, I do everything in real time, I don't cut anything out, speed anything up. If you are more advanced, feel free to speed me up, really not a problem. This channel is aimed at all skill levels and hopefully even experts may pick up a tip or two. Because let's face it, the day we stop learning is the day we die. Right, I'm going to insert a clip just now which talks you through the difference between deep set and hooded lids because I see so many people with deep set eyes mistakenly being told or believing that they have hooded lids. So I'm going to talk you through the differences, it will be just my eyes on the screen so it's going to be really up close again, you're really going to easily be able to see what I'm talking about. I'll talk you through the differences between the two eye types and then I'll talk you through the workaround for each eye type to get the best initial look and the most longevity from your makeup. Okay, here comes your clip, I'll see you at the other end of it. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crime Pebble Primer in blank page cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Crown Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this, you can blend on it instantly and you don't use any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush. Just a very light layer. And then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got D3 
deep set eyes. So I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much, if not more, lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So. What are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush. Sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow. So just use smaller blending brushes, or if necessary, take the colour right up to the brow, instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using. Just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies, okay I am back. I'm going to use a small tapered blending brush this is a Voldemorphy M321 if you're wondering. So I'm going to start off with the Nikki Tutorials palette and I'm going to go into Mikai, which is the red. And I'm going to start sort of, I suppose, halfway between my crease and my brow and just start. Popping some of this pigment on. This is likely to be a long tutorial because I'm thinking I might do a cut crease today because I haven't done one for a while and you've not had a film from me for ages so I thought it might be nice if I did a slightly longer film for you today. Right, I'm just going to clean my brush off on a clean washcloth. I don't use colour switches, they're too harsh on the bristles of especially um, natural hair brushes. And I'm going to go into Redemption in this Nikki Tutorials palette, which is that beautiful bright orange. I'm going to start off by just tapping it over the edge of the red. And the reason I'm tapping this today rather than blending it is because I want it as bright as possible. Even though with this Crow and Pebble primer you can blend straight on it without losing colour, I really want impact today. And as you can see, just blended those two edges together to soften them. 
clean off the brush. Right now, I'm going into the unknown because I've not used Ofra um, eye pigments before. So this is a new one for me. So I'm going into the yellow. And again, I'm just going to pat that on the edge of the orange. And then continue along. I might add a bit of a touch of this deep orange actually. Just at the edge here. to redemption and just because the yellow was a little bit close in tone to the redemption shade so I'm just mixing a really tiny tiny bit of the deeper orange into it. Ooh, I've got two greens to choose from. I would normally go for the citrusy one, this one. I think it's going to be too close in tone to the yellow. So I'm going to go for the deeper green. And again, just tapping it on. The yellow didn't give too much kick up, but the green's giving quite a lot of kick up in the pan. And is a slightly more or less opaque shade. But it's on. Now I've got choices to make. Okay, that blue definitely won't work. Yeah, let's go for that one. Nice aqua blue. Again, start off by tapping it and blending it into the green. Before continuing along. Let's go back into the green and rebuild that back up again. This green is really quite translucent in comparison to the other shades I've laid down so far. And then I'm going to go into the purple. Again, edge of the blue. Now purples and greens and blues are the most difficult colours to create. And I've already seen that the green is less opaque and tends to blend away 
and I'm starting, starting, starting to notice the same thing with this purple. But this is what you get new palettes for to try out the different formulas and what lots. When you see I'm really having to build this purple up. into the blue again and just strengthen that bit there. Let's just take the blue a little bit further along, I think. Hmm. Okay. So far, so good. Right. Wait a minute. Now, to do a cut crease. The way I do it is I rely on the shape of my eye to show me where to go. I will show you exactly what I mean. Now I like to use this sort of brush. This is a acrylic nail art brush, but they come down really, really fine. Hold it up against my hair, you can probably see better. And I'm going to go in with the Gerard Cosmetics Clean Canvas Eye Base in white. Now, there is a super, super easy way to work out how far up your lid to cut your crease and I'm about to show you how to do it so you start off you get your I'm just going to get a little mirror so I can actually see what I'm doing no, there goes the pencil right, you get this and you just pat it along your lash line and the mobile part of your lid. Okay. Then open your eye, relax your brows, blink a few times and then when you look down you've got the perfect line showing you exactly where you need to cut your crease to. In this way, no matter what eye shape you have, you will know that you're cutting to the right point on your eye. This is especially useful when you have deep set or hooded eyes. Because obviously if I just cut the mobile part of the lid, it would then end up going up above it anyway. I then wipe all the colour off of the brush and just very gently pat over the area, wiping off in between. Because what you're doing is you're taking all the excess off. Because you don't want the excess to mix in with whatever colour you intend to put onto 
Julius. And I promise you, no matter what your eye shape, this will work. I always do my eyes first anyway, so it doesn't matter if you pull some of the colour off because we're going to be tightening up and, you know, tidying up in just a moment. I then get a clean brush and I think today I am going to grab my Ofra, even though they're kind of in the dogs at the moment, the Nikki Tutorials Glazed Donut Highlighter. And I'm going to use this on the lid. And I'm literally just going to press it onto the slightly damp steel. Base. Again, I'll take it off at the end there. See? So if anybody tells you a cut crease is hard to do, they're lying. It's time consuming and the first time you do it, it's very daunting. But you can see how easily that applied. And now I'm going to do exactly the same thing with the other eye. Wallop it on the mobile lid. Let me eye blink a few times and my brows relaxed. And there's all we need to cut our crease to. It really is that easy. And yeah, it's probably not the professional way of doing it. But you know what? It's my way of doing it. And it works. And when I've taught other people how to do it, they're not crying by the end of it. Right, so I'm just going to pat over that again. Wipe the brush off each time. Just to get all the excess off, you can just use your finger if you want, but the problem that I find with that is that I very often end up 
smudging up above and ruining all the effort I've taken to get a nice cut crease. Now with this eye, regular viewers will know, this is the eye that I'm blinding and it was pulled around an awful lot when I was a kid and I'm talking like four or five years old. So I've got super deep creasing this side on the inner part of my eye. So I do have to stretch my lid out a bit when I'm adding any shimmer pigments onto the mobile lid. And this is something that I always tell you not to do because of the damage it causes. Um, I only do it because if I don't, what happens is I end up with loose pigment building up in the, the creasing and then ends up um, as it as the, the base dries up it ends up sort of like coming down and getting into my eye and it can get very very sore. So I'm doing the same thing, going to the highlighter. very gently stretch my lid out to get that on as quickly as I can into that area and then let go. This is something that a lot of people forget they can do with their highlighters. They're like, oh, I've got, say for example, the, I don't know, the Anastasia Moonchild palette. And people go, oh, but there's a, there's a colour on there I would never wear on my face. Well, use it on your eyes then. Just colourful pigment. And then what I'm going to do once I've popped the cover back on the acrylic thing to keep the blade the, the bristles nice and flat. I'm going to grab my washcloth with a little bit of, not washcloth, cotton round with some micellar water on. And I'm just going to use that to tidy up the edge there. Now, a lot of people say, why don't you use tape? And yeah, I could use tape. But, if the tape is sticky enough that it's going to stop pigment from getting underneath it, then it's sticky enough, it's going to pull your eye around, which you really don't need and you really don't want. Right, my lovely ones, I'm going to pause you here while I pop foundation and bits and bobs on and I'll be back to finish off the eye look. Uh, I'll have a little while now for I can chat to you again but for you my darlings it's going to be absolutely instant. So I'll see you right now. Hey my lovelies, okay I am back. As you can see I have attempted a blue wing today. However, as soon as I did it, this eye started watering. Really helpful. Now, um, I've done my eyebrows pink because, well, why not? 
and I'm going to, <clears throat> because the new pride flag has, um, it, it has the six bands of colour and then it has sort of chevrons coming in from the side in trans colours and also brown and black um, to show support for the, the trans community and also for people of colour with all the prejudices etc that they are going through. Um, I believe that it was originally brown and black stripes were added and that was the Philadelphia Pride flag but the current new like sort of a widely accepted pride flag is the one with the chevrons. So uh, I am going to do the trans colours underneath my eye. So I need to grab my white highlighter and I'm going to pop that on the inner corner and bring it along just a little bit under the eye. Do that both sides. That will also help give a little bit of brightness under the in the inner corner there and then I'm going to pick up some of this lovely bright actually no I'm going to the pink first that I use for my eyebrows and I'm going to pop some of that just in the middle I always flinch with this eye because obviously being blind in it I don't have any peripheral vision so I'm relying on a, mono, a, a, little, a little tiny little screen in what feels like miles away on my camera and muscle memory in order to not poke myself in the eye. Regular viewers will be able to tell you how many times I fail at that. And then finally Grab this and tidy that up a little bit. There we go. And then finally, I'm going to go back into that beautiful blue that I used up here and pop that on the outer edge, linking up with the blue wing. The, um, I use the Revolution Flick, Renaissance Flick in blue. I've actually got it in all three of the colours they do at the moment. I've got the black, the brown and the, the blue. But I wanted to keep this as bright as possible today. Yes, I like that folks. Shush phone please, thank you. Right, I'm going to pause you one last time. I'm going to put some mascara on, some, choose a highlight for my cheeks, I haven't decided which one yet, uh, and a lippy. And I will be back once again for you, instant. So I'll see you right now. I am back. Okay, this is the finished look. 
I decided to go in with uh, Star Surfer from Kaleidos for my highlighter today for my cheeks. Um, the lippy, I had to go for a black owned brand, didn't I? So I went for the Uoma Badass Lippy in Angela because technically that is my name. And it's named after Angela Bassett and she's just beautiful. I am sweating like the proverbial pig in a back alley. I was going to say something completely different then. I suddenly remembered my god kids might be watching. So stum. <laughs> Bad bomber. Um, yeah, the mascara is the Maybelline Sky High, which since I, when I first get, everyone else says it, it says it's really dry. I actually found mine was really wet when I first used it. I was getting like the spider transfer up on my, my top lids. Um, but I left it a week or two and now it's fine. Um, you know, I opened it up once a day, let some air get into it. It's dried it up a little bit more. Much easier to use and I much prefer the way it looks now. Um, the foundation I'm using is actually one of the ones I normally use in the summer. It's the Tarte Rainforest of the Sea in Fair Neutral. Um, oh, I finally managed to pick up, I found one on Depop, Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base. I'm giving that a try today to see whether or not it's as good as everyone reckons. So I'll let you know on that one. But yeah, this is my finished look uh, for Will because he wanted the umbrella look and it's also my pride look with a little nod to the trans community underneath because I do actually have quite a few trans friends as it goes um, both male to female and female to male so there we go right um, I really hope you enjoyed this what did I think of these that's that's really something else I should be covering isn't it um, the green and the purple I need to use again blending rather than packing to see um, how they perform because they they were not as impactful as the yellow, the blue and the pink that I used from this palette. Um, so I need to, to give those a try and see really what I think of them. But, uh, you know, so far so good. Obviously it depends on how well they stay on during the day, whether there's any fading through the day. And of course I will only know that in a few hours time. So, shush now phone, thank you very much. Right, as I was saying, uh, if you're one of my 4F babies, please double check you're still subscribed. YouTube are still unsubscribing people, but they are leaving my films in your feed, so it's not obvious that you've been deleted or removed. Um, it's also worth double checking your notification status because all of mine keep getting put back to personalised, which means I don't actually get anything in terms of notifications, which is really bloody annoying. So, that's true not just for me but for all the channels that you follow. Speaking of channels that you follow, I'm going to try and remember to link my friend Will's channel in the description box. It'd be lovely if you could go across and just, you know, subscribe, show him a little bit of support. Um, you know, he's, he's had a rough time of it the last couple of weeks and I'm sure he'd appreciate some of the 4F beauty love that you are always so good at sharing. If you are new here and you've tripped over me some other way, hi, hello, welcome, I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, this is a pretty good indication of what you're going to get from me. Lots of wittering in what I'm told is a very soothing voice about all kinds of everything. Important, not important, interesting, maybe not interesting to you. Um, 
yeah, this is me basically. Uh, it'd be lovely if you too would like to join the 4F family. It's super easy to do. You hit that red subscribe button, then you ring my bell, ring my bell, and choose all notifications in the hope that YouTube will actually send you some. In the meantime, uh, if you have enjoyed this and you want to see what other things I've got, there's an awful lot of films on my channel now. Um, there's tutorials, there's product reviews, collabs, challenges, tags. I even read you my favourite poem in one of them. So I'm sure you'll find something on there to interest you. So basically, I've said it for years. Grab a drink, grab a snack, pick a playlist, put your feet up, chill out with your iced coffee and your, your custard cream or whatever your biscuit of choice may be. And just indulge for a bit, babe, and enjoy yourself. Right, my lovely ones, as ever, all that remains for me to say is yours stay fabulous, and I will see you next time. Bye for now.